the remnants of the old world can be found nearly anywhere you go in Genshin. But how come the ruins that we see on the surface looks entirely different from what we find in Enkanomiya or say the chasm? Even the stonework used, if compared directly, don't look anything similar at all. Sure, they were both old kingdoms and were basically older than the Caribbean's Monstad or Old Liwe, but compared to the ruins like Enkanomiya and the Chasm from the very first or unified civilization, these ruins don't have a proper backstory or set in stone lore. So what is this old ruined kingdom that we see on the surface? Which civilization was this kingdom from? And why are these types of ruins scattered all over Teyvat? Short answer and this is as short as I could make it, Vindagnar and its people is the only civilization we know that bore the symbols of the Triketras in their kingdom, meaning that the vast majority of the people in Tevet before the Archon War began that were not under any specific god would be under the general belief of the earliest god that they know, which is Celestia, and for some reason not Fanes or the Primordial One. We'll go back to that in a second, because this set of people was raised under Celestia's care after the Second Heavenly War ended. This would apply to all peoples of Teyvat in general, which makes sense why there would be similar Triketra structures in Mondstadt, Liwe, and all the way to Inazuma. Because more than 2,000 years ago, before the Archon War, which extends to possibly more than 5,000 years ago, the humans at the time did not officially belong to any god at the time apart from the quote-unquote gods of Celestia. But they did have guardian gods or shepherd gods that descended who had a care for humanity and tended to them. Hence the gods like Makoto, Morax, Guizhong, the Caribbean, Barbados, Andreas, and so on. So you're left with people who only believe in Celestia and no other god above them, which solidifies the theory that the second one really did win the heavenly war, and possibly basically erase the entire existence of the first or unified civilization of Enkanamiya and the Chasm, as well as creating a new civilization using the remaining humans or committed genocide, and then created their own human race. Reasons for all this happening, it's possible that the first civilization or unified civilization was buried or submerged in some way in the second heavenly war, and the second one created a new civilization that was completely different from the first, that did not know about what happened prior. We've seen both Enkanamiya and the chasm with the same result being under the surface of the world, and the ruins we see on the surface bear no resemblance nor lore relating to the old world or Fanes the primordial one. Second reason, it's also possible that the remains of the first world that were left on the surface were changed and reshaped and left to wither after the second war ended with the second god winning. And once the second god won, he or she banned or rather sealed up the people in Enkanamiya. Proof of all this happening is this switch right here, which is different from the switches used by Enkanamiya and the Chasm. This is an Enkanamiya switch, and this is what you commonly see in domains, specifically the ones from patch 1.0 which could and should have been used for this type of design. But it's possible that the second one really did win the Heavenly War, erasing the first civilization and sealing up Enkanomiya. And this switch being akin to the Triketra Kingdom, then Enkanomiya or the Chasm is the reason for all that happening. Alright, done. You can go now. What, you're staying? Oh, okay, good. Well then, here's the long answer. If you look at the old ruins on the surface and compare it to the ruins in Enkanomiya and the Chasm, they basically have nothing in common. For easier context, I'm calling anything related to the Chasm and Enkanomiya either the first civilization or the unified civilization. So if you look at the motifs and patterns used on the first civilization, you would see its design stick to more quadrilateral or triangular shapes. In stark contrast, the ruins that we see on the surface for example, at the Thousand Winds Temple, what you would mostly see is the ever so mysterious Triketra, of which every Genshin lore hunter knows and loves so much. Other than that, the brick bond slash layout used to make the walls don't match up at all. Compare these huge symmetrical and stacked bond placement to the surface ruins running bond style with smaller blocks, you might say that this kind of ruins are just common ruins on Teyvat, and that they're the same textures that were used around the game. Well, actually no. The ruins you see here, if compared to Liwe and Mondstadt, are widely different as well. Mondstadt's ruins, specifically the Caribbean's capital city, uses a sort of uneven and asymmetrical stack, as well as using different squares and rectangular shapes with varying sizes that go in different directions. That along with motifs and patterns that are different too maybe inspired by Art Nouveau or the German name 
Jugden still. I, I hope I didn't butcher that. Then there's Leeward Ruins, which if you haven't noticed, have a very apparent square and cubic presence in their structure, inspired by Morax himself probably, along with these hulking guardian statues. As for Inazuma, however, it doesn't have old structures that we can relate to Inazuma itself, possibly because they used more wood than stone, and that any exposed wood structure past 500 years would most likely crumble or decompose. But if you look at Arami Ruins, the Perpetual Array Ruins, the city in the Hole in Seirai, Port Mume, Surumi's underground city, if you can still remember that, and so many more that I can't fit into this video, all have the same style as the known Triketra civilization, which I will start calling it now. So it's pretty clear that Old Mondstadt, Old Liwe, and Old Inazuma have different structures and architecture compared to this Triketra kingdom. Now if this Triketra kingdom isn't related to the current regions in Teyvat and at the same time doesn't have the same style as the first civilization but can still be found in every region so far, even on a place far far away on a different island, then where did this unknown Triketra kingdom slash civilization come from and who made it? Now I've left out Vindagner specifically because it's the closest kingdom that existed within the timeline that has a somewhat relation to the Triketra kingdom because, well, they made Sal Vindagner of course. And this kingdom started after mortals from the Archon War, probably Mondstadt, left the snow and strife to find a new haven. This is where I need to tell you guys that the Archon War did not have an accurate starting date, but it did end 2000 years ago after the last of the seven seats was claimed. However, the story of Vindagnir lasted possibly 3000 years ago, all the way to possibly more than 5,000 years ago, making it apparent that they existed for quite some time within and after the Archon War, as well as before the Frost Nail fell and before the Cataclysm occurred 500 years ago. So this points to the answer that the people of Pindagnir, not having a protector god over them, and that the only gods they worship were Celestia and possibly the great tree they had in their kingdom, which would also make sense for the general population of Teyvat under Celestia's dominion. And what do I mean by that? Way back before gods like Zhongli, Guizhong, and as well as others descended into Teyvat, the mortals or people were only under Celestia. And if the only divine being that they know is Celestia, then most of the symbols, patterns, as well as iconography that they would use would be related to Celestia, and not to the gods that descended just yet. Which is the reason why we would see the same structured ruins all over Teyvat and why they would all have Triketra symbols and a belief for general divinity. Some of these humans did have shepherd-like gods that tended to them. Celestia itself, however, is still the all-time god of gods. And somewhere before the Archon War started, which was possibly 3,000 to more than 5,000 years ago, the lesser gods began to harbor their own groups of people. Hence why you would see the Caribbean's Mondstadt, the old Liwe with cubes for Morax and Guizhong, as well as the ruins in Inazuma, which was possibly under Makoto at the time. And after the war had ended 2000 years ago, which was plenty for all regions to make their own separate style of structures, the difference from the Triketra symbols would be more and more prevalent compared to the older civilizations. Great, we now know what this Triketra kingdom really is, and from what sort of abyssal void this place came from. But this possible newfound knowledge carries with it quite a big problem with just one question. Why would the old Triketra kingdom not know who Fanes is? And if the ancient Teyvat people didn't know who Fanes is, what happened to those people who knew Fanes after the Second Heavenly War ended? Keep in mind that Fanes was the god of the humans from a very long time ago, and for at least 25 to 50 years described in their book as the Year of Jubilee and be forgotten by all the citizens on the surface is very suspicious, especially since Fanes was forgotten by the people in the surface right after the Second Heavenly War, which was a very impactful battle that submerged and buried entire regions of the first or unified civilization. And those humans that did survive the impact of the war with their memories intact were sealed and banned from ever coming up to the surface. Now here's a slight kicker that I observed. These ruined switches, as you can see, belong to the Triketra Kingdom, or well, Vindagnir. This type of switch you most likely remember from the chasm near the Nail Chamber. But you will also see this from domains that came all the way from patch 2.1. Lastly, here's a switch that's specific only to Enkanomiya. 
but if you look at the main entrance before going to Enkanamiya, the switch used to open or close the barrier is from the Triketra Kingdom. Which is weird because Enkanamiya and the Chasm has different and more fitting switches that developers should have used. This makes me think that the seal used on the people of Enkanamiya wasn't by Fanes, but rather the second god. As the reason for having this type of out of place switch rather than using these two, which fit perfectly for the design and theme of this gate before you enter Enkanomiya. But what's more important is what the second one did that could elicit such a large and near genocidal act towards the people of the primordial one. Was it just mere memory changing like brainwashing and geological terramorphing? Or was it done to the point of extinguishing an entire civilization and creating a new? That is a question that we'll hold on to until the next revelation of the old world's history. Now before I end this video, I want to throw out my biggest thanks to everyone who helped answer some of my random questions and crazy ramblings. Meeting other lore hunters are a real joy for me because, well, we can talk about whatever lores we have from different games. So yeah, big thanks to all the lore hunters that I met and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I would also like to plug my Twitch channel and Twitter account that I'm slowly making more and more active over time. I might also stream on my YouTube channel depending on what I stream as well as using a new avatar so be sure to wait for the next video yeah? Bye!